folks, my name is Matt Peterson. I'm a trainer at Pragmatic Works where we do everything from on-demand learning, private trainings, hackathons, and we have this YouTube channel. So feel free to like and subscribe when you're done watching. And in this video, I'm continuing my series of We've Got This, which is all built around the Power Platform. And I've done some Power App videos, I've done some Power BI videos, I'm ready to revisit Power Apps because in a lot of my hackathons and private trainings, I'll get the question, hey, I've got a gallery of records, how can I search over those or how can I filter them down? And I wanna bring you a few different ways of how you can get that accomplished with some search boxes uh, and with some drop down boxes in order to allow your users to filter and search for things. So without any further ado, let's head on over into the application and see how we can get this accomplished. So we're visiting or revisiting the application I built in episode one and episode two. So if you wanna get caught up, feel free to go watch those videos. Or if you're like, hey, I just need to know how to search and filter, I don't need to follow along with you, then you're right here right now and let's get to it. So here's what we wanna do. We want to take these records and be able to search for them. So how I'm gonna get it accomplished is I'm going to put in here a nice little box that allows my users to type in what they want. So in the insert ribbon, in the input, I'm gonna put in a text input. I'm gonna bring this down. Uh, obviously at the end I would design it to make it look picture perfect, but for now we wanna see functionality. And here is the number one thing I see that I have to troubleshoot with people when they try to do searching. They forget to take out the default value. If we leave the default value as text input, when we search, it's gonna look for a park name called text input, which we definitely don't have. So what we want to do is get rid of that default property for today's example. So once we get rid of this over here in the properties pane, we're also going to do another modification. So I'm just going to get rid of text input. And then for the hint text, I am going to do something like search for park. Now, once we have that done, the next part is to add in the search capability. Now, when I was first learning how to do searching, I thought, hey, put the search where we're doing the search um, commands in where we're putting in Ronnie Van Zant Park or whatever. However, the search command has to be done where the data lives and our data lives here in our gallery. So what we want to do here is we want to take our gallery and add some code to it. So I'm going to select my whole gallery here and then in the items, I'm going to come on up and in front of park, I'm going to simply say, let's search and we're gonna follow their command. So it says, what do you wanna search over? Well, I wanna search over my park table, which is a SQL server table that I have hooked in here. Now the text is saying, where's this text gonna be coming from? Well, it's coming from that input I just put in. So in my case is called text input three. Now text input three is just a control on my screen. So I have to say, what do I want to bring out of that control? There's a whole bunch of properties I can do. Well, I need the text out of it. So here again, what we're gonna do, and I referenced this in episode one, anytime you're not sure what to do next, you're like, I don't know what to do, hit the period in Power Apps that sometimes will help guide you to where you need to be. So when I put in a period here, ah, I want the text out of it. Perfect, so now I'm bringing back text, which is great. Now it's saying, what column do you wanna search over? And you can have multiple columns. So for today, I just wanna go with the park name. So I'm gonna come on down, find park name, but if I wanted the city as well, let's add it in. I could do comma, and then I could also say, let's search for the city. So now once I have that in here, we should be able to, in a second, play our application and start searching for either cities or parks. So when I put in an R, notice that Ronnie Van Zant Park, Thunderbolt, Black Creek Park, they're all coming back because they all have R's in it. But when I put in RO, now I'm only getting this one for Ronnie Van Zant Park, and then over here, because I put the city, I'm also getting Doctor's Inlet. That's as easy as it is to set up your search capability with this nice SQL Server table. Now, what if we don't? What if we want them to be able to, maybe not search over it? We don't want to manually have them type it in, but we want to have a drop-down box for them to be able to select a park from it. Well, that can be done as well. So let's take a look at how that is accomplished. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna come on over and I'm gonna insert another input, but this time I'm gonna have it be a dropdown. Now when I put in this dropdown, you can see that the items are just set to dropdown sample. Well, we want our actual data in here. So what I'm gonna do with my dropdown selected, over in the items, I'm gonna point to my part table. And then for the value, I want the values that they're looking at to be the park name. So when I come on in here and I hit play, we should now see all the individual park names that I have, which it's looking pretty good. 
Now, how do I get the gallery to talk to my dropdown? So I'm going to come back to my gallery, going to wipe this code out and start it over. And what I want to do is I want to now bring in the filter command. I want to only return the park based on the park name that the person has selected from the dropdown. So we're going to go with the filter command. So in the front here, we're going to go filter. And I want to filter over my park table, comma. Now here comes the test. I want the park name for this table, so park name, I want it to equal what we select from our dropdown. So this is drop down, drop down one dot. What do we want from there? I want the selected text. All right, so data type is returning a record, okay, because this the drop downs return records. So dot, and then I want the park name. So when I bring that all together here, and I now hit play, notice what I have. Ronnie Van Zant Park, Thunderbolt Park, Doctors Lake Park, they're all getting returned here for me. So again, that formula that was used here on the dropdown or on the gallery is say, look at the dropdown, look at what text was selected, and because it's a dropdown, it produces a record here because those are the items, and then we want the park name returned from that record that was selected. So this is working picture perfect. And again, I could also say, hey, search for the city and then return the park name for that city that you had, which wouldn't be good here for this dropdown because we have multiple parks in these cities. We'll talk about in future videos how you can use combo boxes to return multiple values at the same time. But here's a kind of a little bit of an issue that we see that I get a common ask. They say, well, well what if, Matt, when they get to here, they want to see all the parks? Well, right now it's only going to return one park at a time. So how is that accomplished? Well, there's a few different ways to do it, but let me show you how I've done it in the past. So what I do is instead of having my items set to the park uh, values in the park column, I set up my own collection. And I put this, I put it on the on start property here for this app because I only have one screen, but it could be on the on visible property. Uh, but I put it here on my on start of the park itself. And so whenever my application starts up, I'm going to code in these two commands at the top. The first one is called clear collect. What clear collect is going to do is going to clear out anything that is in a collection. And I'm going to call my collection call park. And then I'm going to put in the collection to start with a result of all. So my first result in this collection is just going to be all. Then after that is done, I'm going to do another collection where I'm going to collect the distinct values, so only distinct values from my park table in that park name column. So if this was a table that had multiple occurrences of certain values and you only wanted those distinct values, we would use the distinct function here. Now this is going to get run whenever we start the application, which I've already done here in the studio, but if you ever need to run your on start property and you don't want to close out the app and then reopen it, if you come over to the app itself and hit the ellipses, and then click run on start, this will put your collection. Now to verify that collection, you can go to the view ribbon and you can hit collections. And as you can see, I have the result of all, and then here are all my different cat all my different park names. So when I come back out of here, here's where I'm going to make a modification. Now on my drop down, I'm not going to have the item set to park. Instead, I'm going to have it populated with my collection of the park names. And by doing this here, notice what we're going to get. We're going to fix this error in a moment. But over here, I now have all my park names as well as this all category. So here's the beautiful benefit of this. If I come back over to my gallery and I'm going to take this over here, we're going to, I'm going to again wipe this completely out. So I'm going to say, I want to filter. All right, what do I want to filter over? I want to filter my park table, comma. I want the park name to equal from my drop down, so drop down one dot selected. So this time it's going to be dot selected dot result. Okay, so dot selected dot result, because now it's a collection of just this one column. And so I want the result of that column, which in this case are my park names. So when I close this off here, we don't have the error, that's good. So let's see, if I go to Thunderbolt Park, okay, I'm getting Thunderbolt, Moccasin Sloth, getting that. Uh, but when I go to all, nothing is coming back. 
because <clears throat> we don't have a part name called all. So here's how we're going to fix this next part. We're going to put some conditional logic into our filter statement. We're going to say, hey, if all is selected, I want to return the entire part table. If not, then look at the, the drop down selection of what we have. So let me close out of here and let's go back into modifying our items. So I'm going to just simply um, get rid of all of this here and we're going to start off in our items property. So we need to say if. So if, what we're going to do is if from our dropdown, so we're going to say if the dropdown one dot selected do 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 dot result is equal to all, then what I want returned is the entire part table, the entire thing. If not, then I want to do my other filter command that we had just a second ago. So again, normally I would just copy and paste, but just to reiterate the command here, we're going to say, if not, let's filter. We want to do over the part table, comma, what do we want? Well, we want the part name to equal from our dropdown one dot selected, again, because we have to use selected because we're using a collection here now, dot result. Close that out, close it out with that last one as well. And so now when we hit play, when I have all selected, I'm getting all of them because we said if it's equal to all, return the entire part table. If it's not selected to all like Doctor's Lake, then do it from what equals in Doctor's Lake. So that's how you can manage it to get to that all. Now one extra little tip here. It's pretty easy to simply go straight to all and, and select it. But if you wanted one extra piece of functionality here, if you wanted a button that just simply reset it back to all, that can get accomplished. If I go to the insert ribbon, I'm just gonna put in a, a quick little pay, uh, play button here. And I'm just gonna say something like um, reset filter. So reset filter. And so the action on the on select is what we're gonna do is use the reset command and I'm gonna reset the control, which in this case is my dropdown. So I'm gonna reset dropdown one. Now, if I hit play, this is so neat. Okay, I've got uh, Doctors Lake Park selected. I hit reset filter, that turns it back to all and this comes back to all. And that could have been done with a, an icon and image, but I just simply put it here for a button. So these are a few ways to have your gallery searchable and also how you can filter them with drop downs. Again, later this year, in my episode series here we've got going, I'm gonna show you how we can do this with combo boxes as well as check boxes as well to filter down your galleries. Now the last thing I am gonna show, because another common ask here is, how can I filter it based off of another gallery? So I'm gonna put in a quick, quick gallery here. So I'm gonna go insert, uh, let me find my galleries which are over here. I'll put in a vertical gallery and I'm going to have it connected to my park inspection table, which I currently don't have that table in here. So let me go over to data. I'm just going to add some more data in here. So this table here has all of my inspections. So let me bring in this inspection table. Let me connect it to it. Once I have that in, I can then put those inspections in this gallery. So my data source is now going to be the inspections. Again, I would definitely change all the labels in here, but we can see, actually, let me do that right here. Um, go, this is for this item dot, let me bring in the inspection date, looks good. And then underneath, we'll put here, instead of this item, we'll go this item dot assessor. And actually, I think it is inspector instead. Yep, this item dot inspector. Now, what I want to do is based off of my selection over in this gallery, I want these records to be filtered down. So I don't want to see all the inspections, but only the inspections for this gallery. So here's how we would get that done. So this is going to be a gallery filtering down another gallery. So for the items here, I'm going to come on up and put in a filter command. So again, I'm going to come here. I'm going to say, let's filter the inspection category or the inspection table. And the way that I have these set up in these two tables, in the inspections table, every time we make an inspection, we put the park ID that it's attached to. And in my park table, every park has, an inspector, uh, has a park ID as well. 
So we want the two park IDs to match up. So I'm going to say I want the park ID to equal. How do I get that park ID? Well, that park ID is going to come from this gallery. So I need to say, go look at that gallery. So in this case, this is gallery one for me. I would rename these in an official app, like Gal Browse Parks or something along those lines. Dot, look at who I have selected, dot, and then I want to return the park ID. So here in just a moment, we will now see already that the records have changed. And when I click on different parks here, we see that these are changing as well. Now there'll be some other UIs that we add to where those parks get filtered or get uh, shaded a different color based on who I have selected. But that's how you can also filter a gallery based on another gallery. So a lot of filtering was discussed in here, a lot of, uh, and a little bit of search commands. So hopefully it's something you can start to include in your apps. Uh, like, subscribe, let us know if we can do anything to help you out with any of your business needs. I hope you enjoyed and I hope to see you in episode number six. Mm -hmm.